participation of uh, Senator Robin Hood Padilla. Let's proceed with uh, our hearing. This is the Committee on Social Justice, Welfare, Rural Development, joined with the Committees on Finance, Civil Service, Government Reorganization, and Professional Regulation. So this public hearing um, is uh, going to tackle the uh, following amendments. And we herewith recognize um, the uh, presence online of the following senators, in addition to Senator uh, Robin Hood Padilla, we have Senator Ramon Bong Revilla Jr., who is one of the authors, Senator Bongo, who are both present online. With that, uh, we declare the uh, presence of a quorum and call upon uh, the uh, committee secretary to recognize our resource persons to tackle the agenda of uh, the two sets of bills with the same subject matter, and uh, that is the Centenarian Act uh, of 2016 to be amended, and in addition, the Magna Carta for Child Development Workers or Daycare Workers. So, uh, Committee Secretary, please. Good morning, Senator Marcos and Senator uh, Robin Hood Padilla. Thank you, everybody, and welcome for, uh, thank you and welcome sa public hearing natin on the two bills, uh, the cent amending the Centenarians Act of 2016 and the Magna Carta for Child Development Workers or Daycare Workers. With us today, representing the Department of Social Welfare and Development, we have Yusek Rowena Nina Taduran. We have Mr. Arevalo, Eric Arevalo, the Executive Assistant, Ms. Miracel G. Laxa, the OIC Assistant Bureau Director, Program Management Bureau. For the Department of Finance, they are represented by ASEC Valerie Joy Brion from the Fiscal Policy and Monitoring Group of the DOF, as well as Ms. Astrud Jacinto, Ms. Sara Conch. From the Department of Budget and Management, they are represented by the Chief Budget and Management Specialist, Ms. Belinda Pinoy, Attorney Carlos Borja Jr., their acting CBMS, Mr. Michael Leon Simon, Budget and Management Specialist 2, Ms. Madeleine Mapalam, Budget and Management Specialist 1. From NEDA, uh, they are represented by ASEC Sara Lin S. Dawai Dukanes, the Planning and Policy Group. Uh, we regret that uh, the Coalition of Services of Elderly uh, is not represented. From the National Anti-Poverty Commission, they are represented by the Secretary, Dr. Lopez B. Santos III, and Mr. Antonio Chavez, the advisor of the lead convenor. From DOLE, the Department of Labor and Employment is represented by Attorney Felipe and Galgo Jr., the Undersecretary for Legislative Liaison and Legal Affairs Pastor, and Mr. Eric Gallardo, their technical support. From the DepEd, uh, sorry to say, Senator, but they are here as an observer because they are not allowed to speak for the for the department, we have Attorney Nikki Salopaso, the te Senior Technical Assistant this three, and Ms. Dayanara Hoson. From DILG, the Department of Interior and Local Government, they are represented by the USEC for Eternal, External Legal and Legislative Affairs Attorney Juan Victor Llamas. And Attorney Rolando C. Puno, as well as Attorney Gino Lavarias. From the Civil Service Commission, they are represented by Director 3, Sila S. Acuna, from the Human Resource Policies and Standards Office. The Early Childhood Care and Development Council is also represented by Mr. Edwin Talion, the Planning Officer 2, and Ms. Jolivet Yao. Program Development Officer 2. That's all, Senator. 
Thank you very much. And with that, we recognize also one of the authors, uh, Senator Sherwin Gatchalian. Uh, I'd like to invite at this point, uh, as we uh, tackle the, the amendments to the Centenarians Act, um, I would like to invite um, Senator Bong Revilla, who is online, if he has a few comments, and thereafter uh, live Senator Gachalian, who's also one of the authors. Thank you. So, uh, Senator uh, Ramon Bong Revilla Jr., if you have any prefatory statements. Okay, while we await uh, Senator Revilla, perhaps we can invite at this juncture Senator Wynne Gatralian to uh, make a few introductory remarks. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for uh, uh, hearing this proposal. Uh, this proposal is quite simple. Uh, we're just adding uh, two more age brackets, 80 years old and 90 years old, uh, to, uh, to uh, receive benefits from the government. Uh, not to a level of 100,000, but only 10,000 for 80 years olds, uh, 80 year olds, and 10,000 for 90 years old. And the reason for that, Madam Chair, is uh, it's, it's really difficult not to reach 100 uh, years old. It's basically close to impossible. So just to extend uh, the hand of government uh, to those who turned 80 and 90 and to make them feel that they are uh, still a productive um, group for our society. Uh, we deemed it um, appropriate just to extend a little support to our uh, senior citizens who turned 80 and 90. So this is the concept of the bill. So thank you, Madam Chair, for again uh, scheduling this proposal. Yes, thank you very much uh, to Senator Gachalian. Are we able to uh, connect to Senator Revilla? Okay, we can uh, go back to Senator Revilla in uh, that regard later on when he's back online. In the meantime, I would like to invite the uh, primary uh, national government agency concerned, um, you, the DSWD. But uh, perhaps Robin Hood, Padilla, our senator here, would like to say something as well. Sorry. Uh, magandang umaga po, mahal na tagapangulo. Ako po ay uh, makikinig lamang sa inyong uh, pagdinig dahil uh, ito po ay napakahalaga na mabigyan po natin ng kaligayahan yung ating mga senior citizen dahil tunay po yung sinabi ninyo na yung kanilang edad, regalo na natin yun sa kanila bilang sila ay kayamanan natin. Dito po sa naglalakad na kayamanan yun eh isang kwarto ng kayamanan ang mga ating mga senior citizen. Maraming salamat po, mahal at tagapangulo. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat sa ating uh, uh, ginagalang na seatmate, Robin Hood Padilla. And uh, I think with that, we recognize USEC Congresswoman Nina Taduran. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, the Honorable Aimee Lamualdez Marcos. Chairperson of the Senate Committee on Social, Justice, Welfare, and Rural Development, Senator Padilla, Senator Revilla, Senator Bongo, and Senator Gachalian, my colleagues from the DSWD, other source speakers, observers, friends, and other guests, magandang umaga po. As we tackle today the proposed Magna Carta for Child Development Workers, this is judicious so as to provide these workers better compensation, protection, and other privileges in order to secure their profession and ensure the delivery of quality learning to children and become better citizens in the future. This bill, once passed and enacted, will safeguard their loyalty and confidence in the performance of their vocation, the advancement of the Filipino child. Through the enactment of this proposal, this will complement the well-being of child development workers, including the protection of their job, their welfare, and interest. On the other hand, Your Honor, childhood is a human stage 
as the government provides safeguards to the sector, it is indeed just and humane to make available additional benefits and privileges to Filipino elderly, particularly those between 100 years old. The proposed bills calling to amend the Centenarians Act of 2016 is high time. This will give them additional financial support and incentives. With the various proposals and this move to offer better financial support to the Centenarians, gaining backing from countless groups and organizations, it will lessen the financial burden on their respective families and enjoy the benefits and privileges as provided by this act. Once again, the Department of Social Welfare and Development supports Senate Bill Numbers 21 and 74, entitled An Act Amending Section 2 of Republic Act Number 10868, otherwise known as the Centenarians Act of 2016, and for other purposes authored by Senators Ramon Bongavilla and Senator Aquilino Coco Pimentel III. We are also pleased to inform the Honorable Chairperson Marcos that the DSWD's official position paper on Senate Bill Number 295 filed in the 18th Congress by Senator Rivilla was submitted to the Committee on December 15, 2019. Finally, the DSWD reiterates its full support to Senate Bill 120 third by Senator Nancy Binay and a numbered bill filed by Representative Lynn Brosas. Today, we are hopeful that through this meeting, these proposals by both Houses of Congress will bear as constructive results, leading to the eventual passage of these bills. Once again, magandang umaga po. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Yusek Taduran. Um, I think I am not uh, wrong in saying that everyone actually supports this bill. Um, we are all excited, and certainly for Ilocanos, this will be a huge windfall given that my province posts the highest longevity rates in the country by up to six, seven years. So, tuwan tuwa po kami dito. Talagang uh, jackpot po to. Kaya lang, ito nga, yung pera ang problema. So I think I see Senator Bong Revilla now. Uh, perhaps our uh, good senator and author would like to say something in addition to what has already been said. Thank you, Madam, Madam Chair, and uh, good morning. Sa ating napakasipag na chairperson, Senator Amy Marcos, uh, Senator Robin, Senator Gutchelian, uh, uh, and our resource persons present uh, in today's hearing. Sa arawin nito ay naghahain tayo ng mga panukalang may adika na uh, ibaba ang uh, katarungang panglipunan sa ating mga kababayan. Social justice is a dream we, we, we all strive to achieve. Pangarap natin makamtan ng ating mga uh, kababayan, lalo na mga sektor na madalas sa uh, naisasantabi, ang ginhawa at tulong na makakatulong sa kanila sa mga hamon ng buhay. Today, we will be tackling important measures that uh, seek to bring social justice closer to the people. Uh, isa na rito ang hiniain mismo ng inyong lingkod para sa ating mga mahal na senior citizens, uh, Senate Bill Number 21. Inilaban natin ito ng huling session ng Kongreso at makakaasa kayong uh, patuloy tayong magpupun uh, pagpupunyagi upang matamasa ang ating mga kababayan ang beneficyong tinutulak natin. Under the present law, uh, only those uh, who reach the age of 100 years old enjoy the benefit of cash gift. Uh, with the proposed amendment, uh, we will give in uh, advance the monetary benefits afford afforded for the centenarian law so that even those who reach 80 years old and 90 years old now reach a cash gift of 10,000 pesos. Alam natin malaking tulong ito sa kanila, uh, lalo na sa kanilang mga pangunahing pangangailangang uh, personal at medikal. Sabi nga eh, life is too short. Uh, and at least uh, we can do uh, for, uh, for our elderly countrymen is to ensure that uh, while they are still here with us, uh, they get to experience and enjoy benefits and assistance from uh, from the state. Uh, 
pag-aani uh, natin ang yugtong ito ng kanilang buhay. Malapit sa puso ko ang mga nakatatandang miyembro ng lipunan and I have a soft spot talaga sa ating mga senior citizens. Ala lahat naman tayo. Uh, in fact, nakapag-usap kami ni <coughs> Senator Aimee yesterday. Um, she mentioned about the budget, the source of funds. Uh, alam natin na medyo mahirap-hirap. Pero sa computation ng ating uh, office, uh, there are about 4.5 uh, billion ang kakailanganin for the 90 and 80 years old. So, baka po pwede natin reconsider, Madam Chair, pag-aralan natin mabuti. Uh, alam kong malaking maitutulong nito para sa ating mga senior. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And, uh, dahil ano to, eh, ito yung priority measure ko talaga na nanggaling sa puso ko. Sana po ay uh, may reconsider natin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Love you. <laughs> We love you po talaga eh. <laughs> talaga. Thank you, thank you very much. At uh, February na talaga ngayon. Magandang pakinggan sa mga tigang yung uh, mga love you, love you na yan. Pwede na rin. Go bong. Anyways, um, going back to business, I think everyone is united and unanimous in um, supporting this. My true concern uh, derives uh, from the fact Now, um, I, if you recall, I had the longest budget hearing um, defending the Senior Citizens Council. At ang totoo, uh, talagang may dahilan kung bakit pabagsak na ang Senado. Ouch. Anyways. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Kaya nga, buti wala na bagsakan. Anyway, buti na lang. Seal proof ang mga empleyado natin. Okay lang ba kayo lahat? Sure ba? Pabilis lumundag. Go! Anyways, eto, balik tayo sa trabaho. Ang problema ko, kung maalala ninyo, last year, pagkatagal-tagal ako nahuli na matapos sa budget defense, umabot tayo ng alas dos ng maga yata. Ewan, basta napaka antok na antok na kami lahat. Pagkat ang katotohanan, apakalaki ng utang natin sa ating senior citizens. Eto yung inaalala ko. As we stand now, as we sit, uh, we already owe uh, a huge number of senior citizens under the old law, which requires that the stipend of 500 pesos be given monthly. So may kulang na dyan. In fact, linagyan ko ng karagdagan yung budget natin, ng 5 billion. Yung 20 billion, siningit na lamang sa unprogrammed. Kasi under the old law pa lang, eh, kulang na. Kulang na yung pera natin dun sa 500. Hindi lahat ng 60 and above nabibigyan as we stand, di ba? Apakarami ng unserved portion. On top of that, meron naglaps into law na karagdagan dyan. Yung 500, di ba, nagawang 1,000. Yung 1,000, zero pa lang ang naibibigay. Yan ang totoo. That's the problem. So, it's zero uh, right now. For both senior citizen stipends, as we are well aware, eh, nasa, nasa 79 billion ang requisite, ang requirement. So, ito na yung mga requirements under the law na unserved. On top of the 79 billion, meron pa rin tayo uh, Centenarians Act, hindi ba? Uh, so, uh, I think uh, the Centenarians Act is also there. And uh, so far, so good naman. Would somebody like to update us? Uh, I have here your submission that as of uh, 2021-2022, uh, although ang pagkaalam ko may shortfall sa 2022, nire-report ninyo 99%, tama po ba yun? So, walang shortfall ang uh, 2022. Yun ang understanding ko dati eh. Ang alam ko, kulang yung budget na yan. Paano ninyo minagic yan na 99%? Actually, Madam Chair, with the budget that was allocated to us for 2022, we were able to serve uh, the 98.95% of our senior citizens. Um, 
Kulang po talaga siya, Madam Chair. Kaya, kaya nga, nga po, kulang pa for 2028. Baka 98 as computed against your budget. Yes po. Opo. Oh, but as computed against the total universe of centenarians, kulang yan. Alam ko sa Ilocos Norte, marami kayong utang. Eh. Opo, marami po talaga. <laughs> kaya nga, so total unserved. <laughs> Ay, wala siya dito. They could provide na nung siguro. <laughs> Yeah, so perhaps you can give me, ang, ang alam ko, ang sinasabi mo na 99%, yun yung obligated this birth paid out mo. Ang problema, marami pang centenarians nag-iintay. Tama o hindi? Yun ang pagkaalala ko, kaya nag nagugulat ako sa report ninyo, hindi totoo na 99% ay bayad. Kasi sa amin lamang maraming nag-iintay. Sa Cordillera, ganun din. Sa Region 2, ganun din. Lahat ng kumakain ng malunggay at saluyot ay nabubuhay <laughs> ng matagal. Okay, perhaps you can provide me that? Yes, Madam Chair. Kung kayo nagde-declare ng 99%, pagkata, pag 99%, hindi kayo madadagdagan ng budget. Kayo talaga mahina. Forever na tayo social welfare nito. Okay, would there be anyone else who would like to add uh, to this discussion? I know there are quite a few guests here. Um, would you like to add anything, Po, from uh, DOF and Department of Budget and Finance? Because uh, we all are in full support of these bills, but uh, we are also fully aware of the budget constraints. We have ASEC Brion. Thank you, Madam Chair and Your Honors. Good morning. Um, coming to this, me to this meeting, Your Honor, we understand our difficult position in this meeting. But we'd also like to raise, and thank you very much for prefacing the, the discussion also with the consideration of the, our fiscal position. So when we analyzed, um, given our mandate to ensure fiscal prudence, um, we want to raise a couple of issues on the on sustainability also of the proposal. So as you mentioned, Madam Chair, um, just for 2023, if this passes into law this year, we would need um, about 2.2 to 4.4 billion. And this is still conservative. We have not taken into consideration. No, I think uh, Senator Revilla has just stated he estimates it to be 4.5 billion, double of what you're saying. Um, yes, Madam Chair, for Senate Bill 21, that's 2.2 to 2.4 for 2023. Um, and this does not yet consider, Madam Chair, our Filipinos overseas who are also covered by the proposal. And this is quite a huge jump from the 2023 allocation of only 254.1 million. So um, we will have to look for more funds for funding the program. And at the same time, there might be displacement in some existing programs if we reallocate the budget. The second point, Madam Chair, is that um, You've mentioned the increased longevity, and that is now the trend. There are more older persons, um, and the life expectancy actually has increased. The male life expectancy is now about 68 years old, and the female life expectancy is about 72 years old. So which means um, in the future, we would have to allocate more for social pensions for our elderly population. Um, and... Second point, Madam Chair, if um, the idea of the bill is also to provide social protection, we already have um, existing measures in place. As you've mentioned, Madam Chair, under RA11916, we've doubled the pension for our indigent um, senior citizens. We've also already have um, discounts in place to alleviate the plight of our senior citizens, um, tax exemptions for our senior citizens, and un under RA10645, mandatory field health coverage to also take into consideration their health concerns. 
So as a way forward, Madam Chair, um, we also note that um, LGUs can provide the advanced cash gift if the national government is really constrained. I'm sorry. The LGUs are also authorized under the local government code to provide the yes, cash. Yes, but the OF uh, did not uh, agree to the Mandana's ruling's proper execution, and you've actually diminished the share in NTAs of the LGUs. So how can LGUs be expected to bolt in when their resources have been uh, uh, reduced? So, Madam Chair, um, the national it's not government. Your fault, Asa. <laughs> it's my piece. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Those are our inputs to the discussion, and we hope that the committee can consider these points. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah. Much. I think there's someone from DBM here as well. So, yes, uh, DBM. Is that Attorney Borja, please? Yes, I'm um, morning, Madam Chair. Do you have anything to add to uh, DOF's position? Yes, ma'am. In addition to what ASEC Brian mentioned as containing our official uh, position paper dated September 8, 2022, uh, we mentioned that the proposal will have a huge budgetary impact and will greatly affect the limited fiscal space of the government since the funds allocated for the Centenarians Act is only $254 million. And uh, in the absence of additional revenue measures, it will be very difficult for the national government to fund the requirements of the subject bills, which will have to compete with other urgent priority programs and projects of the government. In general, we recommend to further study the proposed legislative measures, and we likewise defer to the inputs of the NEDA and DOF on the economic and fiscal impact of the bills. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, thank you very much. Um... In the effort to get around this bill, perhaps the bitter uh, consideration would be to decide uh, whether we will actually implement the 1,000 subsidy or fill up the gap for the original 500 monthly subsidy so that uh, we can address this. Actually, kung mo, mas to eh. Parang okay siya, mas maliit. Pero, in the meantime, you'll be depriving na nga the seniors. Apakahirap eh, which is our priority kaya? Um, Senator Wynn, Senator Bong. Um, are we choosing the 60, 70 year olds over the 80, 90 year olds? This is the problematic part of the question. Um, this in a certain way, in accounting ways, um, seems more palatable. Dahil... Uh, Two to four billion is much less than the actual required uh, 79 billion for the amounts owing our seniors. But at the same time, many will argue that it's unfair because uh, it focuses on a very small number and uh, neglects the greater universe of senior citizens. Ang hirap naman ito. Does uh, DILG have any comment regarding LGUs contributing their share, DOF having reduced their resources? Good morning, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, if the question is uh, if the LGU have to contribute, uh, <laughs> well, uh, definitely we have to consult uh, the, the leagues about it, Your Honor. Uh, No, I think you don't need to consult the leagues. They've made their position loud and clear. Does Dole have any opinion regarding this, or uh, it's on the second portion, the second uh, set of bills? Uh, yes, Paul. The, uh, our position, the department's position on this particular bill, Senate Bill number 21, Senate Bill number 74, and Senate Bill number... 804. Our department uh, fully supports this. As a matter of fact, uh, some uh, senior uh, citizens are looking forward <laughs> to the approval of this bill. But uh, we defer to the uh, plenary uh, power of the legislature. Okay lang ba? Approved na lang ng approved tapos wala nang bayaran. Para happy na sila dun sa approved. Pwede ba yung ganun? Palagay ko hindi. Um... Okay. Uh, Neda's also here pala. 
Uh, so we'd like to recognize ASEC uh, Dawai Tukanes. Good morning, Madam Chair and the members, esteemed members of the committee. Yes, as we've submitted uh, to the committee, NEDA supports the general principles of the bill, uh, acknowledging the difficulties, possible challenges uh, faced by older persons, including loss of income, functional difficulties, increased health care costs, neglect, and social isolation and loneliness. So we thus find merit in providing cash gifts to Filipinos who reach the age of 80, 90, and 100 years old, as this may encourage longevity by giving them something to look forward to in their golden years. And this may improve their psychological well-being and also providing financial support for their daily needs. Further, the proposed measures would contribute to the PDP 2023 to 2028 sub-outcome of reducing vulnerabilities and protecting the purchasing power of Filipinos. However, we should consider the budgetary implications of uh, or the availability of government resources, as has been noted by, by the chair. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to add to the discussion? Uh, yes, Dr. Santos, I'm sure uh, you support this. Yeah, from the National Anti-Poverty Commission. Uh, the National Anti-Poverty Commission fully supports these uh, Senate bills. Uh, however, I would like to to uh, articulate the thinking of our senior citizen uh, sector. They may have a uh, different thinking. We have here the uh, senior citizen representative. Iba po yung kanilang pagtingin. Medyo kaiba dun sa pagtingin natin. Ang uh, kanilang pagtingin ay... Uh, ay uh, hatiin na yung 100,000 pag abot nila ng 80, ay uh, matanggap na nila yung 50,000 at uh, yung 90 ay kalahati, 25,000, 25,000. Uh, siguro po maintindihan natin yung kanilang uh, pag-iisip uh, being senior citizen themselves. Alam natin kung ano na ang estado ng isang tao pag 80 anos, 90 anos at uh, 100 years. But uh, I'm sure it will be a big uh, problem thinking in terms of uh, fiscal space. But uh, this is the thinking of our uh, senior citizen sector po. Maraming salamat po. Actually, sa pangungusap namin, nung ibang senior citizen groups, mas uh, sabi nila, mas makatarungan daw kapag pinaghati-hati, pinigyan na muna yung mga dating uh, uh, kalipikado na tumanggap nung 500 man lang da buwan kesa piliin pa yung ibang sektor. Uh, yun ang sabi kasi mas minimum na minimum na talaga yon. Senator uh, Robin Hood Padilla please. Uh, uh, Lalo kang pauli, pwede po bang malaman kung ilan na ba talaga yung ating mga lolo at lola na mag-80 at 90 years old? Meron po ba kayong datos niyan? Wala. Wala yung uh, walang numbers bin uh, binibigay sa atin eh. Kaya uh, Tinatagal namin. Sa DSWD, but you're only relying on DOH. No, your for senior citizen numbers are so magulo also. Based on listahanan po, uh, na data po natin, but we only have for the 90 to 99 years old, Madam Chair. Ilan yun? For the 90 years old, we have 17,742. Uh, uh... Department of uh, Finance, pakikumpit na yun. Baka maguluhan ako. Sa... 18,000 sa 10,000. 742. Ayun. 100. Ayun, Madam Chair. 177. Bakit ba kayo? Bakit ba kayo? Monthly. Uh, let's be warned lang, you know, the data you're quoting of 17,742 is based on December 2017. This is ancient data. Okay? Magpakatotoo tayo, no? Limang taon na yan data yan. I-multiply mo na yan, dear. At medyo mataas-taas na yan. Hindi na yan totoo. Actually, Madam Mas Chair... Mas tama yung kay Senator Revilla. <laughs> Opo. Aapak tayo ng four and a half. Days. Yung sa 100 years old, Madam Chair, ang utang po natin, nasa 755 na senior citizens ang hindi nabigyan. 
Madam for last Chair. year. Yes, uh, Senator Revilla, please. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, siguro ito panahon ng pandemya, marami pa rin nabawas na mga ma, mga senior citizen dyan. So, mas malaki din po ang naibaba. No, yung mga namatay because of COVID. So, malaki din porsyento yon Dapat uh, kinukonsider din natin yun. Uh, so, mas, sa tingin ko, mas mababa sila. Madam Chair. Kung may dapat ang PSA, uh, dapat may uh, meron silang record niyan. Nandiyan ba yung PSA natin? Wala, hindi eh, natin natawag. Sorry. Sorry, Madam Chair. Okay. Pero having said that, nandito si Kose, no? Yung uh, communications group ng Kose, may datos yata. Uh, we recognize either Miss Rochelle or Miss Aquino. Uh, actually po, ito po ay datos din mula po sa PSA. So, projected po by 2025. Yung 80 plus po actually hindi po disaggregated yung datos ng senior citizens. So, nasa 1,138,400 yung 80 years old pataas na senior citizens. So, yun po yung datos po na nakuha natin. Pero okay lang po ba kung dugtungan ko na po yung statement po kanina, kami po sa KOSE, Of course, sino support po namin na taasan sana yung budget, ano po ng social pension or extend po lawakan yung coverage kasi po kung ila extend po natin yung coverage ng kasalukuyan na social pension program, marami pong mga 80 years old, 90 years old na ngayon ay hindi po sakop ng social pension program na tiyak na makakasama po kung lalawakan natin yung coverage ng existing social pension program. Salamat po. So ang sinasabi ninyo mas gusto na ninyo ito kesa sa bayaran yung ibang uh, senior citizens younger than 80 or 90? Uh, Is that what you're saying? Hindi Pero po, Madam Chair. ang dinig ko sa iba, eh, kabaliktaran yan. Yes po. Hindi po, Madam Chair. Kami po sa KOSE, kasama po ng Confederation of Older Persons Associations of the Philippines, isa pong uh, grupo din, ano po, sinusuportahan po namin yung amendment ng Centenarian, pero ang point po natin po sa KOSE at COPAP, kung hindi po tataasan ang benefit level ng Centenarian, huwag po sanang babaan. Bagamat ang sinusulong po talaga ng... Hindi, hindi naman natin ginagalaw yung sa 100 years. Opo. Ang pinag-uusapan natin, pipili tayo. Opo. So, Madam mababayaran Chair. natin yung 500 na monthly stipend na alam naman natin mm -hmm. kulang na kulang. Or, uh, eto na. Parang uh, apakahirap ng pagpili nito. para ka namimili kung aling lola ang mas love mo eh. Aling anak ang mas gusto mo eh. Madam Chair po, no? gusto talaga natin mas marami po na senior citizen yung makikinabang. Kaya nga po talaga na sinusulong natin itong social pension na mas malawak po yung coverage. Kasi mas marami pong senior citizens yung makikinabang. Kasi sa kalukuyan po, Madam Chair, no? ikwento lang natin ng konte sa mahigit 33 years na po ng kose, ano po bilang non-government organization, nakita na po natin yung mga sitwasyon na may 80, 90, na talagang hindi pa nakakapunta ng hospital or sa clinic kasi wala pong pera. Pero kung ito po ay sasama sila sa social pension program, mas may chance po na magkaroon sila ng access dun sa basic health po na para sa kanila. Hindi mo naman ako sinagot eh. Yes po, to, isusulong po natin at susuportahan po yung hindi, existing... Hindi, hindi mo ako sinagot. Alin na uuinahin natin? Ay, yung dating utang... O uumpisahan na naman natin ang panibagong programa. Bayaran mo na yung utang, di ba yun ang normal? Yes po, babayaran po yung utang. Ayun Pero na, ay okay, thank okay, you. Po, thank yun yung sagot, po. very good. Uh, uh, um, po, mahal na tagapanood. Gusto ko lang pong klaruhin, yung uh, computation nila, yun po ba ay pang one time na bigay o one time po yun? One time lang. Opo, yung 177 million. Di ba po? Ay, hindi. Ay, hindi. Po, di, sa dating datos nyo po, ah, pinag-uusapan natin, hindi po sa binigay na datos nila. Taon-taon, di ba? Taon-taon po 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 ba? Taon-taon po
Ah, uh, kay Asik Brion 'yon at yung 4.5 kay Senator Revilla Opo. dahil ang pagkaintindi natin ay eh, 1,138,500 million na 80 and above. Okay, okay. Kaya po na umabot ng 2 billion. Yeah. Ah, okay. Dito pala ang bilis. Isang Is there anyone uh, who has an inspired solution to this problem? <laughs> ang sabi, pag maikli ang kumot, bumaluktot. Ito, tumbling na, hindi pa rin magkasya yung kumot. Okay, Miss Bastiano, please. Good morning po sa lahat ng ating mga kasama ngayon. Uh, to uh, uh, the chairperson, Ma uh, Madam Madam Senator Amy Marcos and uh, our Senators uh, Robin Padilla, uh, Revilla and uh, uh, Gatsalian and uh, Senator Pimentel. Magandang umaga po sa lahat ng mga kasamahan ngayon. Uh, natutuwa po ako na kahit uh, naririnig ko na nagkakagulo-gulo na ang mga, mga <laughs> damdamin at isip natin ngayon ay uh, nakala nakalagay po sa lamesa nag-uusapan ang uh, uh, kapaganan ng mga senior citizens. For the longest time, hindi po pinag-uusapan ang nakatatanda. Lagi na lang isinasa isang tabi. So, uh, natutuwa kami uh, na for, 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 ano, for the longest time ay hindi po napag-uusapan ito but uh, ngayon ay pinag-uusapan. Pero nalulungkot po ako kasi kanina parang uh, nagkakaroon ng uh, kalituhan uh, pag paggawa ng, ng desisyon uh, at pagpili alin, alin ang naiba, alin ang tatanggapin yung ganun po. Ang sa amin po uh, bilang representative ng mga senior citizens uh, it's not It's not an e a question of either or. Kasi ito pong mga itong mga beneficyo ang ating pinag-uusapan ay uh, uh, entitlement kung tutusin ito ng mga nakatatanda na for the longest time ay hindi po naiisip ng ibang mga mambabatas. And very fortunate po tayo ngayon na meron tayong mga mambabatas who are much more aware na ang mga nakatatanda pala ay bahagi ng lipunan at ang mga nakatatanda pala ay nag, uh, nag, na, nakapagbigay ng malaking bahagi o na, ng kontribusyon uh, sa uh, pag, uh, pagpapaunlad ng ating bansa. We would not be having this kind of, uh, of uh, the, this country right now, this community right now that we are in kung wala po yung mga nakatatanda. So, uh, po I represent uh, the National Anti-Poverty Commission Senior Citizen Sectoral Council. Dito po ang aking mga boss. Mga yes, I would just like things. to inquire. Yes. We uh, failed to uh, um, derive the presence of the Senior Citizen Council. Are you in contact with them? Do you represent them also in some? Way? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we do. In fact, uh, ito pong, ito pong uh, position paper namin. I, I'm going to read, if you will allow me. Uh, uh, we can just insert it into the record. Yes, ma'am. We have a copy. Yes, Perhaps you can just uh, add any salient points that have not yet been dealt with. Yes, uh, maybe just, a, just an elaboration. Liwanag lang po kung bakit uh, ito ang aming na, napagkaisahan. This actually is was in collaboration with uh, the Policy and Planning uh, uh, Unit of uh, the National Anti-Poverty Commission. Uh, yes. Sama po kami. Yes, uh, I'm perplexed by the assertion here that uh, the cash gift for the centenarians will be removed. There is no such notion. There is no intent to touch in any way the centenarians' gift. Yung nasa pop-up position paper. Ito, uh, ito ba yun yung pinigay ninyo? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, uh, ito galing, po yun. Uh, I represent the uh, Senior Citizen Sectoral Council ng NAPSI po. That's right. Yes, um, yes, so is there anything that uh, we need to take up po? Kasi pare-pareho naman tayong sumusuporta rito. Ang hindi natin yes, maintindihan kung paano kukunin niyang pera. At alin ang pipiliin na unahin pagka nagkaroon ng pera? Yes, ma'am, but uh, siguro para sa akin, like I said, uh, we are not making choices. Kami po, we are not making choices. We support uh, both, ano, both uh, 
campaigns, uh, both bills uh, para po sa universal social pension and uh, para po sa uh, centenarians, uh, the amendment of the centenarians uh, law. So ang uh, nabanggit na po kanina uh, ng aming uh, secretary and lead convener na we are proposing a, a, uh, a much buy. bigger set. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, uh, your proposal is even larger. This is the this is the concern, no? You have fifty thousand at eighty, twenty-five thousand at ninety, twenty-five thousand at one hundred. Yes. So, pinabawasan niyo yung one hundred. Ganon po. Yes, actually, uh, it's still the same amount, no one hundred per older person. Uh, uh, thinking, I mean, uh, hoping na aabot lahat yan ng one hundred. This is the same formula that Doctor Santos posited earlier. Yes, so, but, uh, lang po. Uh, but uh, we we just would like to elaborate. Yes, Masipit please. Ang okay. Namin. Uh, naniniwala po kasi kami. This is premised on the belief that ang malusog na mamamayan ay biyaya ng pamayanan. Uh, so, uh, mas tinitingnan po namin ang magiging, ang magiging uh, kahalagahan ng tulong na ibibigay ng pamahalaan doon sa, sa nakakatanda. Uh, if, if we give the, the, uh, the 100 pesos, uh, 100,000 pesos sa isang 100-year-old, usually hindi na yan nakikilala, hindi na yan nagagamit. It does, doesn't have much use uh, sa pagpapa, pagpapa, uh, sa ayos for a better quality of life no nakatatanda. So, uh, ang sa amin, ilagay natin doon sa mga, sa mga panahon na ito ay magagamit at makakatulong ng maayos doon sa nakatatanda. For instance, bakit po sa 80? Because nalala, uh, alam po natin na ang 80 anyos na doon yung peak ng mga sakit at karamdaman. At iyon yung panahon na uh, if given uh, the right intervention, the proper inter medical intervention, pwede pa siyang gumaling at pwede pa siyang umabot siguro ng edad 100. Pero pag ito po ay binigay mo sa 100 years old na wala nang paggaling yun, hindi nagagaling yun, naghihintay na lang yun. Siguro mapaglalagyan na lang yan ay ibili na lang po ng memorial plan. Di ba? sa kanang casket para sigurado naman yung nakatatanda na mamamatay siya hindi siya papaanod na lamang sa uh, sa dagat. Oh, very very practical po talaga yung inyong suggestion. Yes, ma'am. So, at 90, uh, may ito po kasi yung ano namin yung position. I don't know if this was transmitted to you because Yes, it was. I think this is the same as the NAPSI. In position paper on the Senate bills. Ha? Ayun po yun. Lang naman, it's the same yes, but we have explanation here. Ah, okay. Ito po yung supposition paper namin. Yes, you can submit uh, any additional papers. Po. Yes, ma'am. Okay so, Pero pareho rin lang. At yes, uh, naintindihan namin na talagang mas praktikal at makabubuti sa lahat na maraming makakatanggap ng 80, 90 years old. Yes, ma'am. Na kung tutuusin, mapapakinabangan pa nila na Thank todo you. itong uh, dagdag. Kaya nga lang, ang problema, saan manggagaling ang dagdag? <laughs> Samantalang may malaking utang pa na bilyon-bilyon. Okay. Doon sa utang nun, if I may be allowed, uh, may suggestion lang kami. Taon-taon uh, merong unused funds ng mga government agencies because of uh, the absorb uh, non-absorptive capacities nila. Mar marami silang isinosoli uh, by the billions. So baka po pwedeng uh, a portion of that can be allocated para dito sa ganito. Also, uh, kanina po uh, pinag-uusapan yung tungkol sa uh, sharing ng LGU. Naniniwala po kami ng LGU ay dapat may responsibilidad dito because the people are in the LGUs. ba? Hindi naman itong mga taong ito ay doon lang sa, sa national government. In fact, itong mga nasa LGU, itong, itong mga tao actually are the ones running, are the ones helping the LGUs. Whatever uh, development there is in the LGU, yun po ay nanggagaling sa mga tao at kasama po yung mga nakatatanda. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. But those of us in the legislature as well as the financial managers are fully aware. Um, I think Senator Revilla wanted to add something, Pop. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, just, just to put it on record, baka akalain nila you're against the bill. Ang al alam ko na ina inahanapan din ng solusyon to ni uh, ng ating Madam Chair. Oh, I'm not against the bill. Uh, tumbling lang dito sa kwan, sa paghanap ng pera. Ano siya? Uh, kumbaga, 
hindi natin kailangan mamili kung sino makatatanggap o sino may sasantabi. Pero ma'am, meron na akong solusyon. Si Amy ang solusyon. <laughs> At si Bong ay konsumisyon. <laughs> well anyway, um, bigyan natin ng sakit ng ulo si Senator Angara sa finance and uh, nandiyan din naman sila. Ano? Well anyway ma'am, alam ko magagawa natin ng uh, paraan nito basta uh, pagtulong-tulungan na lang natin. Uh, alam ko pong uh, ma- malapit sa inyong puso ang mga, ang mga senior citizen basta... Uh, So we will do everything para po sa inyo kung hanggat kaya po ng ating uh, pamahalaan. Yun. Thank you, Madam Chair. Pasensya na. Yes, thank you very much, Senator Gachalian. Th- Madam Chair, thank you. Uh, I just want to get some basic uh, information and data, uh, maybe from, DS- uh, may- from DSWD or PSA or whoever can provide us with... Uh, some basic numbers so that we can enrich the records. Uh, ilan po ang 100 years old this year? Do we have a, do we have data on that? How, how many po ang 100? Um, yes, Your Honor, we have, uh, as of, kaya lang hindi po ito updated pa rin, based from this tahanan. Um, I, what year is that? Uh, 2023 na po pala. Ito na yung updated. We have... Uh, target, a uh, physical target po of 2,465. 2,400. For 100 years old, uh, Your Honor. 490. 2,465. 2,465. So that's around... 490 years old. How many are 490 turning... 490 po we How have... many are turning 90? Uh, how many are turning 80? Kasi yung sa 2017 pang list, pero yung ito pong sa 100 years old... For 2023 po ito, uh, budget allocation. In 2046. Do we have 490 years old so that we can uh, compute it properly? Kung wala naman po, paki-submit uh, na lang to the yes. committee. For nine, yes, because that's sir. the that's the direction of the bill. Eh, no? 80 and 90 years old, just submit to us. And then um, another concern, Madam Chair, is also uh, we're adding... 80 years old and 90 years old, but I heard the chairperson, chairperson I me, that we're still having problems distributing for the 100 years old. So uh, adding more age brackets will not solve the problem, will aggravate the problem. So dito po sa 100 years old, itong 2046, assuming this is the number no, uh, for uh, uh, 2022, no? how many have you distributed among the 2000? Um, yun po, Senator, uh, we only were able to serve 1,692 senior citizens in 2022. Kaya po yung 1,692. 90, Kaya yun 92. po, yung kulang nating 750, uh, yung natin, doon sa 755, ay yun po ang idinagdag po namin sa aming proposal for 2023. So meron po 755 who are not this 100 years old na hindi po nakasama for the budget allocation in 2022. No, the, the 755, uh, 100 year olds to? Opo. May budget na. Ito po, uh, ngayong 2023. <laughs> Opo. Ah, okay. Mas marami po sa Region 1, 380. Oh. Okay, so... Itong 755, wala siyang budget at all. Um, May budget na hindi lang ma-distribute. Meron na pong budget, uh, Senator, for 2023 pa lang na ipasok. Okay. Mm-mm. So we can already pay the 755? Yes po. Uh, actually, coincidentally, Madam Chair, yesterday I received a text from a constituent from Bulacan. And... Uh, 2021 pa sila nag-apply mm. pero until now hindi nila makuha no and uh, apparently uh, pabalik-balik yung yung uh, applicant no and um alam niyo ho every day counts for 100 years old 100 year old eh no buti na nga ho lumampas na siya ng 2 years kakaantay no, 2023 na ngayon eh. But alam ng mga senior citizen, pag pumalo ko ng 100, uh, ba, 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 na ang binibilang mo, hindi na araw-araw eh. No? So, 
I've, uh, based on that information that I received from a constituent, uh, there's also issues on the distribution of the uh, amounts. Apparently, isa sa mga requirements, school records. Ano naman natin hingin school records for 100-year-old? Diba, hindi, hindi natin alam kung either nasunog na yun, na, 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 na bahana, lalo na sa Bulacan. So, uh, my point of the matter there is, uh, although I am one of the authors of this bill, uh, we need to also resolve the distribution uh, both in terms of efficiency and also practicality. No, because we're talking about people who have reached uh, 100 years old and um, a lot of them might have, need, a lot of them bedridden na ho, hindi na makaalis. Uh, may mga requirements ho na hindi na practical, like uh, school records. No, how, 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 do you, how do you submit a school record? Diba? So, uh, just submit na lang ho to the committee, uh, Madam Chair, um, yung uh, just an accounting of that 100, itong centenarian, in 100 years old. For example, ho, ilang ba ho talaga ang target for 2023? Ilang pa ang balance for 2022? You know? Magkano pa ho ang kulang for 2022 and 2023? Uh, because we need to also look at the practicality. And then just submit to us also a breakdown of the 90 and 8 years old. And at the same time, uh, please look into the practicality of the requirements and the distribution itself. Because if we will impose 1980, tapos hihingiin nyo in school requirements, oh, wala, na talaga, wala na tayong pinag-uusapan. Hindi talaga madidistribute ho yan. No? So I've um, detected, I didn't solicit this. Ah. Um, a, a constituent just texted me yesterday lang, quite out of coincidence, no? na ganun din na experience nila. Two years na, hindi pa nila nakukuha yung kanilang 100,000. Kawawa naman. Oh, oh. So that's, uh, yeah. Madam Chair, if I may, um, we will look into that, sir, kasi na means, uh, I mean, napakasimple na lang po ng requirements natin for the centenarian. It's only the birth certificate of the centenarian or yung kanyang eldest na anak or affidavit of two dis interested person Hindi, na po. Pero Ms. Lax, sasabihin natin ng totoo, simple nga yung requirements, wala namang kayong datong. Wala kayong pambayad eh. Kaya pabalik-balik walang pambayad. O di qualified yung tao, kompleto yung papel, kompleto dokumento, wala na kailangan isubmit. Kaya lang, wala namang kayong pambayad. Yun ang nangyayari. Well, sana, sana Madam Chair, yun na lang ang banggitin doon sa applicant instead of pabalik-balik. Kawawa eh. No, kawawa yung applicant. So, and this is not only one, ah. Uh, meron silang, alam niyo naman, maraming marites eh. So, nagkakwentuhan sila, maraming ganyan na issues, no. So, kung walang pondo, walang pondo, then let's solve that. But wag naman daanin sa mahirap yung yung applicant kasi kawawa naman, no, kawawa naman. And then second, Madam Chair, uh, another feature of my proposal is to automatically adjust it to inflation no? because the centenarian bill is about 20, I think it was promulgated 2016. No? So, alam naman natin, inflation. Kaya sabi nung representative sa Jose, sana wag babaan. Without doing anything, bababa talaga siya. No? Inflation is the is the killer. No? So, that 100,000 right now, it's only worth 79,000 at uh, present prices. No? So that's the reason why I also propose, because in, in my proposal, there's an automatic uh, adjustment every three years. No? So uh, para, para naman makahabol. No? Alam naman natin, uh, inflation in our country is quite, uh, uh, it's a roller coaster ride. So we want to make sure that the 100,000 is still 100,000 valuable. Uh, to this point. No? So, uh, but I admit, Ms. Madam Chair, that uh, securing 4.5 billion, I think that's a target, is a um, challenge. Uh, I talk to the DOF uh, regularly because of the tax proposal sila. Nag-aaway ho kami. Madali, mahirap po. Madaling gumastos, mahirap po kumita eh. <laughs> no? So, I admit that. But Let's let's run the numbers. That's why it's very important to have those basic numbers. Maybe we can adjust it a little bit, fine tune it a bit. So uh, in the meantime, Madam Chair would require 
uh, DSWD and, and maybe the uh, Senior Citizens Commission to submit basic data so we can refine our proposal. Yeah, this um, unfortunately we have neither the PSA nor the Senior Citizens Commission today. Uh, nevertheless, uh, Committee Secretary, please enjoin them to submit what they have. In the meantime, may I also urge Ms. Laksa, as requested earlier by Senator Gachalian and myself, to provide whatever data you have at this point and do not give us naman yung six years old. At uh, wala nang silbi yun eh, na COVID na at na pandemonyo na yung buong daigdig. Yes, Madam so, Chair. So kung sana, you can give us whatever you have. Yung kose, you're also here. I believe the Anti-Poverty Commission is also hand in glove with the uh, Senior Citizens Commission. If you can provide us with further numbers. With that, uh, Senator Gachelian, if you will allow, uh, are we ready to go into a TWG so that we can generate a committee report? But uh, we still would appreciate as much data as you can generate regarding our senior citizens, regarding um, the uh, distribution of the sums uh, already allotted to them in the previous GAAs, including the 2023 GAA, so that we can better understand the problem and derive a solution. So thank you. With that, we proceed to the next item in the agenda. Those who are uh, not concerned with the Magna Carta for daycare or, chi or child workers, um, you may be excused and go back to work. Thank you. Okay, uh, so um, we have several bills here, four actually filed um, for the Magna Carta of Child Development Workers and the Magna Carta for Daycare Workers filed by Senators Binay, Jingoy Estrada, Senator Cynthia Villar, and once again, Senator Bong Revilla. So, um, this is the act that seeks to cover all persons providing early childhood care and development in government-run daycare centers um, and non-stock non-profit daycare centers run by volunteers, people's organizations, associations, and non-government organizations. Mm. This requires a uh, plantilla position, which is why we have invited the DBM and the CSC to be here. And uh, it also urges that uh, um, levels should be established for academic completion. Uh, there is uh, the intent to provide stability and uh, job security. And also the... Uh, legal requisites to render eight working hours a day or 40 working hours a week with the usual uh, labor standards of providing ill health, social security, cost of living, hazard, overtime, retirement, and free legal assistance. So um, we would like, therefore, um, to ask first the DSWD about uh, their uh, concerns in this regard. Mauna muna yung DSWD at pagkatapos nun yung uh, DOLE, matapos yun yung uh, CSE at, D at DBM. Okay, is uh, the DSWD ready? Okay. Yes, yes uh, you said yes, that. Madam that Chair. Uh, well, the department fully supports uh, the enactment of the Magna Carta for Child Development Workers Bill NAM for the following reasons. Uh, one is based on the more uh, implementation nationwide through the DSWD's ECCD information system. The bill has long been anticipated since the 10th Congress by the Child Development Workers particularly the 79,451, 1,969 uh, 1, are male, and 77,482 are female, who are occupying tenured 
and then tenured position with outstanding wages and benefits. Number two, as of January 31, 2023, there is a total of 65,424 child development centers serving a total of 1,000 or 1,000,000. 260,707 children enrolled in the child development centers nationwide for the school year 2021-2022. Number three, the total number of CDWs nationwide, there is about 7,389 or 9.3% child development workers are volunteers. And this bill is of great relief as this will provide them the opportunity the tenured workers of the barangay, other non-tenured positions occupied by CDWs are as follows. So we have 17,479 uh, are occupying the casual positions, and then we have 23,835 contractual, 5,561 job order, and 15,890 are on memorandum of agreement. So it could be noted that of the total number of CDWs nationwide, only 8,739 are given the permanent positions. Number four, Madam Chair, as of July 18, 2022, the ECCDIS data shows that 14,725 child development workers nationwide receives a monthly honorarium or salary range of below 1,000 pesos, while only 1,054 CDWs receives 15,000 pesos above per month as honorarium or salary. Number five, ultimately the passage of a Magna Carta of child development workers is essential to the continuous holistic development of our future leaders, starting with children aged zero to four years old. Number six, studies have shown that early childhood care development programs help in increasing academic performance of these children that returns the investment of our government in the education system. Furthermore, Early childhood development programs are also considered as essential in breaking the cycle of poverty among families. Further, the World Bank Program Guide 2000 on ECCD Early Childhood Countries accounts by Evan Myers states that research shows that investment in the early years outperforms other public policy options in terms of savings in remedial programs in this regard. And lastly, Paul. Once enacted, the Magna Carta of Child Development Workers will ensure the future of 11 million Filipinos aged four years and below, while also giving security of tenure and benefits to 79,451 child development workers currently employed by the government through the local government units. That is all, Madam Chair. Yes, thank you. Um, we're a little bit confused here. It appears that um, the intent of all bills is to pass on to the national government the cost of uh, um, the cost incurred by salaries and other expenses for the daycare. At present, the daycare uh, workers are paid by the LGUs. As uh, former Mayor Sherwin Gachalian and former Governor, we both know. Ano, binabayari ng LGU sa ngayon, eh, di ba? Kaya kung minsan, ala chamba. Kung uh, may pera, okay. Kung uh, four to six class municipality, patay kang bata ka. Tapos, uh, kung kagalit ka medyo, o hindi kayo malakas sa LCE, sabihin na natin ang totoo, minsan nakakalimutan pa per quarter pa. Alam ko yun, eh, maraming nangyayaring ganyan. At money out ang ating daycare workers sa pag pagsiserox, paggagawa ng laruan, kanya-kanyang uh, diskarte na lang kawawa kasi wala namang facilities whatsoever kung minsan. Okay, so on that note, let's hear the bad news bears first. At uh, dito yung DBS, MDOF, Neda, kayo na muna para sira ang araw namin kaagad-agad. Yes, Attorney Borja, please. Then, biro lang. Di naman, di naman kayo nakakasira ng araw. Ginagampanan lang ninyo trabaho nyo. Good morning again, Madam Chair. Uh, for the DBM, uh, 
we are yet to finalize our uh, position paper on the matter. Uh, generally, we with the significant increase in the national allotment shares of LGUs, uh, we defer to their inputs as to the creation of uh, the positions required. And uh, Attorney Borja, I take offense. Many, many LGUs have actually seen a reduction in the NTA uh, X era. That's not true. We'll take note of that now. And we will submit them our position paper on the matter. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, then uh, I think we need to ask, aside from the DBM, the DOF, and the NEDA, perhaps. Yes, Asik Brion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we also don't. We are also still finalizing our position paper. We have initial comments on the measures, um, on creating plantilla positions. We defer to the DBM since that's their expertise. We have an initial comments on the proposed subsidy from the national government. Again, um, this would be our funding <laughs> issue and. Um, on the use of GAD funds of LGUs concerned and contributions collected by PAGCOR, um, there are several concerns here. One is that there might be displacement from existing allocations from PAGCOR funds if the same funding source will be tapped. And uh, Asik uh, Brion, I think I'm in agreement with you, but for a legal reason, and that is fiscal autonomy of the LGUs is very well established, not only in the local government code, but in many other laws. I believe that many LCEs will resent the uh, um, commandeering, as it were, of a percentage of their own funds. Yeah. Um, that's also one of our comments, Madam Chair, um, mandating the LGUs to take on these services will be inconsistent with the principle of local autonomy. So those are our initial comments, Madam Chair, while we finalize our position paper and we'll submit it to the committee. Thank, Thank you. Very Thank you very much. Understood. And as predicted, uh, there are funding uh, issues. And uh, uh, ASEC uh, Dawai Dukanis of NEDA, um, maybe hear from your sector. Good morning again, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, uh, we are yet to uh, come up with an official position on the matter. As soon as uh, uh, it's cleared by the Secretary, we will submit to the committee. But offhand, we are... Um, we are in favor of the proposed measures of the bill, but of course, subject again to budgetary implications, which we will raise and well, defer to the DBM regarding the feasibility of the measures. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Asek uh, from NEDA. And with that, let's call on Director Acuna of the Civil Service uh, with regard to the professionalization and uh, registry of the daycare. At present, uh, perhaps just a clarification, at present, how are daycare workers chosen? Uh, DSWD Muna, Siguro, just to let us know the lay on the ground of the ground. Madam Chair, it is the local government unit through the local social welfare officer po ang nag-hire ng ating mga daycare workers. And sometimes there are cases na yung barangay captain po. So it's the political authorities that hire daycare workers. Are there any well-established uh, rules on the ground? Uh, kung sino yung qualified, sino yung hindi? Actually, Madam Chair, we have the civil service uh, requirements uh, US for our child development worker one and two po. However, hindi po ito nasusunod talaga sa hiring process. Sorry. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never seen that. Meron po sa civil service, ma'am. Sorry. And even in the... Galing LGU ako. Minsan nakita ako yung sinasabi mong uh, hiring something. Even in the DSWD accreditation standards, ma'am, we have the qualification requirement for child development worker 1 and 2 po. Kasi yun, kung hindi alam ng mayor, di rin nakita ng governor, wala rin alam mas lalo yung kapitan. Hindi, yun? hindi po sila na-accredit, ma'am, based on the DSWD standards po. So kapag hindi na-accredit, what happens? Normally, ma'am, sa ibang LGUs and practice, wala po silang additional benefits. Yung ano additional benefit? Credited. Total yung LGU na magbabayad ng stipend. Opo, ma'am. Ano yung dinadagdag ng DSWD sa ngayon? 
So, wala po kami additional... Um, so, sabi mo lang na uh, they are not uh, qualified for additional benefits. Ayun pala, wala namang... Well, practice po ng LGU, ma'am. Wala pong binibigay ang provincial government sa kanila sa mga hindi accredited na child development workers. Only the municipal government ang meron pong binibigay sa kanilang honorarium. So, sa mga daycare workers na binanggit mo kanina, lahat yon accredited by DSWD? No, ma'am. Ayun na nga eh. Kaya nga, so wala rin. Yung DSWD accredited, ilan? I don't have the figures, Madam Chair, now, but I can submit it to you po. Yeah, pero percentage, what's uh, the uh, global number of all daycare workers? The universe, ma'am, it's um, 79,451. Oh, so? Be uh, as far as I can recall, in 2020, ma'am, nasa 38% lang po ang accredited. Tama. Yan, ang, yan din ang alam ko na less than one half ang actually DSWD accredited. Tama? Yeah, so that's a fair statement. Sige. Okay. Uh, with Director, we go back now to Director Acuna. Um, you may have read the four uh, versions of the bill, and as you can see, there is a level of standardization and qualification. So, ano po ang comment ng CSC? Yes, um, good morning po, Madam Chair. Um, regarding po sa um, Senate bills on the Magna Carta on daycare workers, uh, we noted that... Um, there are two types of positions that be, are being created. First is, are the daycare worker positions, daycare worker one and two. And these uh, positions already have um, qualification standards approved by the CSC. And the other set of positions are the child development workers one and two. And these positions are yet to be created by the DBM. So for the daycare worker uh, positions, um, right now, uh, daycare worker one, SG8, requires high school graduate for education. And then there's no um, training and experience requirement as well as eligibility requirement because this, uh, the daycare worker positions are uh, considered skills positions. So uh, there's no... Um, eligibility requirement. They are under the category three position. Yes, Director, we read that. Yes, yeah. there's uh, well, there are some versions that say five years of experience. The others uh, impose an uh, educational attainment. Yeah. Ano sa tingin ninyo? Ano ba dapat? Now, now, that's for the daycare worker one pa lang po. Now, for the daycare worker two position, the uh, approved CSC uh, qualification standards are for education, still it's a high school graduate. Then for experience, uh, one year, uh -oh. one year relevant experience. Now for training, four hours relevant training. Again, for the eligibility, there's no uh, eligibility requirement. For. Right. Yes, we read that. What, what is um, the comment of the civil service? Yeah. When we read for one of the bills requiring five-year uh, experience requirement for the uh, daycare worker too, it seems quite high. Oh, mabigat yun, ano? Yes, kasi considering po that, kung halimbawa po, meron na po tayong daycare worker one, for, for him or her to be promoted to daycare worker two, which is uh, SG8, it will take him at least five years uh, of experience pa po. So, uh, normally po, in, uh, in the progression from one, uh, position to another, there's yeah. only one year, opo, one year lang po. So, kaya po I've seen two to three years po, but never five. Five seems yes, moderate. Yes po. Uh, yeah. the, uh, five years quite too high. Sige. Uh, that being said, perhaps uh, uh, you can make suggestions uh, regarding the daycare worker, as we're well aware. Overseas, daycare workers are actually paid much more much more than grade school, elementary, or high school teachers even, uh, simply because the work is so sensitive, it's so difficult, and exhausting, if truth be told. So um, I'm wondering what the civil service would suggest in this regard. The attrition rate, as uh, I'm also aware, as I'm certain, ex-Mayor Sherwin Gachalian is aware, the attrition rate's very high. Ang tindi ng turnover kasi walang bayad, mahirap ang trabaho. 
So um, maybe you can suggest to us a more fair setup. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, the Dole had some uh, reservations regarding these bills as well. Um, I had a very simple reservation, eight hours of work. Uh, I don't know if that's the universal standard. Uh, I know that daycare workers have much shorter hours simply because uh, the work is so difficult. Anyway, you, you said, I think there was a comment from the Dole about the 17 to 18 year old spot. Yes, yes Your Honor. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, we have uh, already submitted our uh, comments on the, the bill. And uh, we would like to inform this uh, honorable uh, uh, committee that uh, the Department of Labor and Employment uh, fully supports the uh, noble intention of the passage of this bill. And uh, as it seeks to uh, provide adequate remuneration, privileges, and additional benefits to all child uh, development workers, daycare workers, who wish to become regular government employees which includes the overtime pay, aside pay, subsistence allowances, insurance, retirement benefits, and free medical examination and treatment, including the security of tenure and the right to self-organization as mandated under the Constitution of the Philippines. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. I think uh, we are in agreement with the Dolly's position. 17 year old shouldn't be in the list at all. Thank you. And uh, with that, I'd like to call on the actual representatives of the daycare workers. Parang wala naman daycare worker dito. Wala po bang asosasyon? Ha? Bakit wala sila rito? Sila yung topic. Wala ka bang kinumbida, Comsec? Bakit? <laughs> Sila yung, bo sila yung board ng uh, Batas. They do have an organization. I'm familiar with quite a few members. May Federation of uh, Health of uh, Daycare Workers. Bakit hindi na kumbida? Okay, the only one here that uh, hasn't spoken is the Early Childhood Care and Development Council. Maybe you'd like to add to the discussion. Yes, Mr. Edwin Taleon. Yes, Pero hindi naman kayo daycare worker. Nasaan yung daycare worker? Okay. Anyway, yes, Mr. Magandang, Taleon. Yeah, magandang umaga po sa inyo, Senator Amy and Sen uh, Senator Marcos, uh, Senator um, Gachalian and Comsec Agas. Um, the ECCD Council uh, would just like to um, make our position on that um, on our support on the passing of this Magna Carta uh, for child development workers and teachers um, due to the urgent need of... Um, providing security of tenure and proper remuneration uh, for these um, service providers. Um, of course, um, our um, general comment would be um, in keeping up and in keeping up with uh, our A10 for 10 or the Early Years Act, um, the ECCD service providers um, shall include uh, professionals, paraprofessionals, and volunteer caregivers are directly responsible for care and um, education of young children zero to four years. Um, they shall include, but not limited to daycare workers, here and after an omnibus um, a statement in the R810410 is that daycare workers, um, here and referred to as uh, child development workers, and daycare centers to child development centers should be made. So for that, um, we all- Distinction. Uh it is just um, a matter of information. Meron bang child care workers versus daycare workers? In the in the R810 for 10, um, it is um, stated uh, that uh, the child uh, development workers will be uh, the child development workers refers to the daycare workers, and the child develop uh, and the daycare centers are now referred to as child development centers. In addition, uh, um. We propose that uh, yes, to include despite the passage of the law and uh, the apparent change in nomenclature, the reality is it's the same thing, right? Can we settle yes. on one uh, 
Third. One name. Yes. Uh, ano ba talaga yan? It should be, Madam Chair, it should be a child development worker since we have Republic Act. Kaya nga eh. Or 10 po. Yes. Okay, so it's a child development Workers. worker. Yes. Um, if I may proceed po. Um, in, in addition... Oh, sorry. I thought you were done. In addition is to include child development teachers as they are also the existing ECCD service providers and the different national child development Ma, are you not going to call them teachers? Talagang worker. Total worker naman sila dati din. Okay. Um, yes. Um, in addition is the creation of the child development teachers position because of um, a number also of uh, child development teachers who are um, already uh, service providers in the national child development centers. Um, while uh, we see them both as responsible for uh, both responsible for the implementation of the ECCD programs, um, especially in center-based programs. We think that it also um, uh, just and fair to include child development teachers in the Magna Carta as they too are uh, need security of tenure and proper remuneration and benefits commensurate to their qualifications and responsibilities. Thank you very much uh, from the Early Childhood and Development Center. Um, is there anyone who'd like to add um, any insights into the four bills that are here with uh, pending? Madam Chair. Uh, Senator Gachalian, please. Madam Chair, thank you very much. I've uh, been going through the bills and uh, particularly the bill of Senator Binay. And uh, I, I support the... Uh, overall direction of uh, professionalizing our child development workers. Um, but uh, Madam Chair, just to give the committee some form of background, because we've been studying this quite a bit. The uh, early childhood sector natin is quite um, uh, confused. No? It's all chopped up. No, because... Um, in, in uh, when we enacted the um, early years back, no, in 2002, or 2000, so the ECCD. the ECCD Act, this was an attempt to uh, uh, re engineer the daycare system of um, the country. Uh, I'm sure you know, Madam Chair, you were a former uh, local chief executive. Prior to this, a daycare is just parang pang deposit lang ng bata eh, no? So people just bring their kids there, and doon sila for two hours, and then we have uh, daycare workers who are uh, either political supporters or uh, uh, kaibigan ng kapitan o kaibigan ni mayor. So it's really more loose, no? In that sense. Um, so in twenty the year two thousand, the ECCD Act was in, uh, enacted, and this was an attempt to re-engineer no? and professionalize the early childhood program of the country. Uh, and the direction is to hire qualified uh, teachers, not workers, huh? teachers, and also convert our daycare uh, centers into child development centers to put uh, a lot of equipment there. Um, but the most important aspect that we should remember that the administration and governance of these centers are with the LGU. You know? So the way the law is structured, and then after that, and also in 2013 when the Early, early Years Act was um, enacted, uh, the way it's structured is it's still with the LGU, but policy making na lang si ECCD. You know? That's how it's structured. But um, I think the, the direction was not uh, up to speed in terms of implementation. Uh, we still have daycare workers in Valenzuela. Marami ho coming daycare workers. We still lack child development centers. And uh, right now, it's quite um, it's a hybrid setup because in the local, a lot of the, the daycare is under the local CSWD the local social welfare and development office no but in the national it's an attached agency of deped which is chaired by deped oh, so that's how the structure sa local it's with social services sa national it's with education so merong ganyan na uh, inconsistency no 
Um, that's why uh, marami na sa isip po ng tao na itong uh, uh, day, uh, daycare centers, uh, child development centers, it's under DSWD. But in fact, by law, it's under ECCD. No? And ECCD is composed of DSWD, education, and health. So it's a, it's a holistic approach to child development. So that is where we are right now. Uh, that's why in the bill, if you go with the proposal of Senator Binay, you will actually isolate the almost uh, 50,000 daycare workers. No? Because yun ang mas marami ngayon. Eh, no? uh, although she provided uh, a transition, but my point of the matter there is um, the LGUs will bear the brunt of implementing this. No? And um, um, that, that's where I'm confused, Madam Chair, because the salaries and the operations of the daycare slash child development centers are with the LGUs. LGU who talaga nagbabayad ho niyan. No? So uh, I'm quite confused on how the national will now come in in terms of other compensation. No? Um, so that's a, that's a point that we should look at. And then another one is the plantilla position, which I want to ask CSC. Meron na bang plantilla position ang child development workers, national and local? Wala. Or DBM? Is there a plantilla position? Because like in Valenzuela, wala kaming ganyan eh. I'm sure sa Ilocos Norte, wala rin eh. So my point of the matter is we're specifying uh, qualifications. The LGUs, wala naman silang ganun na plantilla. So paano nila ipapasweldo kung walang item yes, doon sa kanila? Di ba yung tawag nga natin dyan, subsidy lang eh. Stipend. Kasi yeah. nga wala namang item eh. Tapos medyo alatsamba pa yung bigay kasi pag walang pera, sorry na lang, tiisan. I don't know if I'm adding to the confusion. I didn't realize that DepEd was there. But um, is there a parallel uh, with regard to the BHWs and the BPATs, the TANODs? Yung BHW, ina-accredit ng DOH, di ba? Pero sino nagbibigay? Lokal din. Lokal yun. O, kaya nga eh. Pero accredited by uh, DOH. Katulad ng dapat mangyari na hindi naman nangyayari, yung DSWD, yung daycare, accredited ng DSWD. Accredited, uh, no item. You made a good point earlier. The accreditation, pag in accredit ng DSWD, eh, wala naman plantilla eh. At the local level. So, anong use nung accreditation niya? Uh, yung po sa standards natin, Sir, uh, Madam Chair, is um, na-accredit po sila if, uh, una, uh, pumasok po sila dun sa minimum salary grade na nirequire po natin. Wala which naman salary-salary grade eh, kasi dun po sa standards. Stipend lang uh, tinibigay ng LGU? Meron po kasing mga LGUs, ma'am, na pumapasok po sa SG10 and SG8 po. Yes, yes. yes po. Meron po. And then uh, child development worker ang... Yes side. po. Uh, now, uh, anong basis? Legal particularly basis? po in LGU Mabalakat City, Pampanga po. They have the plantilla item for child development workers po. Nakalusot sa DBM? I think so. Siguro. <laughs> or by ordinance? I would Not by ordinance? Yes. Uh, LGU Mabalakat po has a separate ECCD committee at the LGU level that takes care of the child development workers, not the LSWDO po. I believe that's the exception that proves the rule. It's uh, hardly the rule. Kasi halos hindi ko naririnig yan. Ang naalala ko, yung BHW, napilitan talaga magkaroon ng DOH accreditation. Pagkat yung mga nagpe-prescribe rin sila ng over-the-counter medicine, eh, maraming insidente na mali-mali at uh, nakoconfuse pati yung gamot ng uh, baka na punta sa... <laughs> Sa, sa tao, yung mga, yung mga nangyayari ba sa probinsya na nakakaloka, sa bagay yung ivermectin dati, sa baka rin yun. Pero having said that, yun ang nangyayari sa BHW, nagkapilitan kami. We were among those who really um, asked that DOH come in and accredit and give some kind of minimum standard. Pero sa DSWD, uh, meron bang ganun? More than the accreditation, the more important factor for us was training na meron silang uh, alaman dun sa basic medicine. Yes, Madam Chair. May training rin ba kayo? Opo, may required training din po uh, for you to be accredited as child development workers po. Pero 
what about the more than 50% the ano ba ito ah uh, yung 60 magkano ba yan yung 64% ilan ng percent na walang training whatsoever I don't have the data, ma'am. Pero mababa na lang sa iyo. Di ba, kasabi mo, 38% lang yung accredited. Yeah, 38% lang ang na-accredited. Presumably, 38% less than Apo. half ang na-train. So, ibig sabihin, 62% are operating without license. Yes, ma'am. Without any knowledge whatsoever. Without no any training yes, whatsoever. Yes po, Madam Chair. Uh, our experience in Valenzuela, admittedly, uh, and uh, you know, in Valenzuela, we tried to professionalize it by hiring... Uh, um, education graduates, but you're absolutely correct. The attrition, um, taas. No, kasi, uh, una una wala silang plantilla, no? So there's no career path for them. So they would rather enter dep ed and teach rather than the daycare. But we have to also remember the, the formative years is between zero to four. You know, this is the most important uh, part of a child's life, no? And uh, that's why we need professionals to uh, attend to the needs and to the education of our children. Uh, I, I, I uh, support the direction to professionalize, Madam Chair. Talaga kalangan na natin professionalize. No? And um, I think um, it's important also to uh, uh, hire the right people, compensate them. Uh, but structurally, we need to also figure this out first. No? Because uh, even under the law, no? itong um, Early Childhood Act. It refers to the implementing agencies, actually ECCD as a council. So, tinignan ko yung batas eh. Uh, where is that? It's only, it's only policy and planning, diba? Yeah, it's only policy and planning. So, it's the LGU pa rin. It's the one in charge of hiring. Uh, but the standards and minimum qualifications sa council manggagaling ho yan. No? And that's, tama kayo as a, as a mayor, hindi ko rin na-feel yan. <laughs> you're, you're absolutely correct po. Yes, I think there's a bit of work to be done. I, uh, I am afraid we have to go into a second hearing. And uh, at that hearing, I think it's important perhaps to call on most of all the concerned group the Federation of Daycare Workers, who for some reason have not been invited, I think perhaps we should also call on uh, the USEC for Barangay Affairs ng DILG dahil siguro dapat kumbidahin natin yung liga ng mga punong barangay dahil uh, talagang nuts and bolts kabisado nila, pati yung liga ng mga mayor, uh, kung maari, para... Uh, mabigyan tayo ng mas malawak ang pagkakaunawa nitong problema dahil hindi nga natin maintindihan. But then again, um, perhaps if you're going to standardize, uh, dapat pare-pareho yung sistema ng BHW, pati yung BPATS, yung tanod, kasi medyo magulo na siya. Uh, in fact, may dagdag din yan, di ba? May BNS, may Barangay Nutrition Scholars, tapos may population pa, Barangay Population something or the other. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Diba? And then yung bins, meron rin dun sa kabalikat ng tanod at ng bipats, meron pa yung barangay intelligence network something, di ba? So anyway, lahat yan, eh, sa ngayon, empleyado ng LGU, di ba? In effect, hindi naman empleyado, pero whatever you call it. Um, yeah, so I think we there has to be some level of rationalization siguro. Consultan na lang natin yung DILG at yaka yung mga liga at higit sa lahat yung uh, Federation of uh, Daycare Workers. So we really have to conduct a second hearing yata, Senator uh, Gachalia. Yeah, interestingly, dito sa ECCD, hindi kasali ang DILG. Kaya nga eh. You're not part of it. So nakita niyo yung disconnect. We're asking the, DO, the, the LGUs to implement, uh, but the LG is not part of it. So even though the ECCD Council will come up with standards, there's no teeth, so to speak, no, to implement. No? So that's why mabagal yung rollout on the ground. No? Uh, alam naman natin, in the ILG, si Bastonero, eh, through your joint memorandum, eh, 
No, and that's what's missing with the ECCD Council. So I think we should uh, have another hearing, Madam Chair. So that yes, I believe so because uh, so far uh, the representatives here are uh, incomplete, and uh, I think there are quite a few matters to be threshed out, as rightly pointed out by uh, my colleague Senator Gachalian. The area of early child development is the golden period for uh, learning and education, and yet we're leaving it virtually to chance, either to the local local government or the DSWD or the DepEd or whoever uh, jumps into the fray. So we have to take this a little bit more seriously given our laggardly position in education and child development. So uh, with that, uh, we suspend this hearing uh, looking forward to uh, another second hearing on the same Magna Carta for daycare or child development workers. To all of you, my uh, thanks and gratitude for participating once again. Thank you and good day.